thank you to the Hawaii Farm Bureau and Brian Miyamoto for participating in our community spotlight this week. Joining us now, we have Representative Onishi and Representative Kitagawa. Thank you for coming on to our show. Representative Kitagawa, you have some wonderful news for us. What do you have to share with us? Um, we do have some wonderful news. So myself and Representative Scott Matayoshi, uh, we are starting the Farm to Car program uh, at Windward Mall starting tomorrow. So we've been working with the Hawaii Farm Bureau as well as other partners such as Kamehameha Schools, Windward Mall, and Alexander and Baldwin to be able to expand the Farm to Car program that's started at the Blaisdell and we'll be starting it at Windward Mall tomorrow. So last week, um, our community, as well as uh, other people who are interested in the Farm to Car program, had the option to go online and purchase produce boxes, set produce boxes that will be distributed tomorrow. So for this first run and extension that um, we had, we had about 140 orders of produce boxes. So it's a little bit different than what the Blaisdell does because the Blaisdell Although they have some set produce boxes, they also do this um, kind of grocery shopping, shopping cart option where people can pick and choose different items. Our um, program right now at Windward is just the produce boxes. We are looking to expand to include Windward farmers. So that is in the works right now. And hopefully within the next week or two weeks, we'll be able to have additional boxes up that'll be filled with all Windward Farmer products. So we're really excited about that. And you know, we really wanted to bring this to our community, not only because it supports local agriculture and our local farmers, but because we also know that people are looking for different options as a way to get healthy products and healthy food for their families. So sometimes people still don't wanna go to the supermarket or they might not want to go to the farmers markets that have been sort of popping up around the island because you know they're still sometimes concerned with social distancing. So with this farm to car program, they can simply drive on up. They don't even have to interact with us. They can just show their number um, through their window and we just put their items in their trunk. So it's just another option for our community to get that healthy food that they need. So you really had to work through a couple of challenges. Can you speak a little bit about the challenges of connecting with windward farmers and how you're overcoming that? Yeah, so windward farmers, unlike some of the other farmers, are usually smaller. So they don't have as much um, capacity to do, you know, these really huge orders like some of the other farmers that are participating at the Blaisdell and the other farmers that we used for this first week of the Farm to Car program. So what we're trying to do right now is working through um, Kamehameha Schools, who has a lot of contact with the Windward Farmers, as well as Brett Matayoshi and myself reaching out to farmers that we know in our communities to see if they can form a co-op, if they can form a group that can come together to put these produce boxes together. We're also looking at figuring out other ways to get them involved. So as we continue to do this throughout the stay-at-home order, we're planning to expand the program to try to meet the needs of our community more, but also to continue to support our local farmers. So we're really lucky to have here today Representative Onishi from the Big Island, who actually has kind of a, a, a bird's eye view of kind of the diversity. So what, what's happening in Windward is different than from what's happening on Hawaii Island. Welcome, um, Representative Onishi. Can you give us a little bit of update on what's happening on the agricultural scene from the federal perspective? Yeah, well, thank you, Della. Um, first of all, there's a lot of programs that are being done at the federal level to help farmers and ranchers. Uh, really quick, I wanted to go over uh, the Coronas Food Coronas Virus Food Assistance Program, which is being run by the USDA. That was recently announced in April 17th. We have more information for farmers and ranchers and nonprofit organizations on the availability of funding. USDA was provided um, 16 million, oh, I'm sorry, 19 million dollars in total, um, 19 billion dollars, 16 of which is direct support to farmers and ranchers. 3 billion USDA purchase and distribution, which is for the purchasing of $100 million per month of fresh fruits, uh, dairy products, and meat products. So all three of those categories have $100 million per month being spent. Um, we also have Section 32 funding 
which is for distribution to food banks, uh, Family First Corona Response Act and Corona Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, which provides um, $250 million, 600 of which goes directly to food banks to purchase food. The USDA has increased the SNAP benefits about 40% more than what states were getting. And Hawaii was approved on April 17th to receive that additional funding. And with the latest um, action by Congress, farmers and ranchers are now available to apply for the PPP and the EIDL, the Emergency uh, Disaster Loans, um, which they were not eligible for on the first go round. So we have our first question from a viewer, Alan Smithy, I believe from urban Honolulu. Uh, this is for you, Representative Onishi. With the many mainland closures, uh, along with scaling back on staff in food supply chains, I think that he's referencing, you know, the closures on the, on the meat packing places. What steps is the state taking to ensure continued food supply in Hawaii? So um, most of the, the impact has been recently on meat producers. Well, not so it's beef, poultry, and pork. Um, as many of you know, the president has utilized his emergency powers and is going to be providing uh, those businesses with additional federal support in order to provide employee protection and sanitization of these facilities to try to keep them in operation. Um, again, there's not a lot that can be done because it takes a lot to stand up a meat processing facility. So getting these sanitized and getting employees protected and put, putting protective equipment in those are paramount and is a priority to continue to supply the public with fresh food, um, especially meat. And in Hawaii, though, we do have capacity for some beef slaughtering um, on every island. Uh, generally, they are um, near capacity, but we're lucky because we also have um, fresh meat available. We have uh, a fairly large live, uh, cattle livestock industry. Um, so we can, you know, utilize that to help fill in the gaps where uh, we are unable to bring in food from the mainland. So it's really important for the state to be supporting. And I, I really appreciate this question about food because it's not just plants, it's proteins. So we have a very active fish industry that we need to support, the cattle ranchers, as well as the um, uh, agriculture, food agriculture, plant agriculture. What is the state doing in terms of any kind of grant programs, Richard? Can you shine a light on some of that? Yeah, so the Department of Agriculture has, the State Department of Agriculture has three programs which they currently are um, in, that they currently have in place. Uh, the first one was a grant program, $250,000, which was taken from funds that are received from the shipment of oil to Hawaii um, called the Barrel Tax Fund. Uh, they provided, um, let's see, 96 grants throughout the state. Uh, 86 farmers receive, farmers and ranchers receive $2,000 each. Uh, 13 nonprofit agricultural organizations were granted uh, anywhere from $4,000 to $10,000. Um, this was distributed throughout the state. Every county had a share of uh, farmers and ranchers that were granted. Um, they also have uh, other programs. They have an agricultural loan division, which has emergency agricultural loans. These are loans up to $150,000 at 3% interest. Um, they also have a microloan program, which provide uh, funds for loans of less than $25,000. So they have these three programs that are currently being run. Um, many of the farmers and farmer organizations 
fund ranching organizations uh, know about these programs and hopefully uh, the farmers and ranchers will be taking advantage of these. So we really have to connect farmers, producers with all of these programs that to help. But I want to cycle back because this question is really about how do we support each other and support local. In some of the conversations I've been having with people offline is that we almost have to have a hyper local com campaign because we now know that we're going to open up the local economy first. We really want people to support local. So the efforts going on in um, Representative Kitagawa's uh, community is super important. And I know, Richard, you have stuff going on in your Hawaii Island communities. You know, I'm going to um, conclude and wrap up for each of you. You know, as we move forward, as we head towards May 31st and the end of the stay at home orders, uh, hopefully we're still going to be opening up gradually. What would each of you like to see as part of Hawaii's um, better normal, the new normal? If I can um, ask you first, Richard, what would you like to see as part of Hawaii's better new normal? So as a member of the House Select Committee on um, the, the, I guess, the response to our economy and how we're going to build it, uh, the one thing that we really need to look at is more information on what Hawaii farmers are raising, what their markets are, and how much actual produce and meat and food are we importing? You know, Hawaii has 1.5 million people. We used to have, on average, about 300,000 guests uh, every day. So, you know, that's not even 2 million people. So we have a small chunk of the food pie in the United States. So we have to, we're going to have to fend for ourselves. What we're finding is we don't have the commodities being done, uh, grown in Hawaii to really food feed people in mass. And I think Representative Kitagawa mentioned a little bit about that, you know, how we have a bunch of small farmers, but to ramp up production in a time like this, it's very difficult. So we need to look at that and try to move that discussion forward and talk about that and how uh, the state is going to help support farmers and ranchers to get this done. And I think we're doing that in the House Select Committee. Um, throwing it to you, Representative Kitagawa, what do you? What would you like to see as part of Hawaii's better new normal? Well, I definitely agree with um, Rep. Onishi, you know, about looking at farmers and really diversifying our economy. We're really focused on tourism, and so looking at what other industries can we start to focus on to try to diversify our economy as we move forward um, after, you know, COVID-19. But I think on more of a personal note, what I've noticed and what I really appreciate is there's a lot of positives that's coming out of this time right now during the pandemic. Really, communities are coming together. People are coming together. People who have maybe never volunteered before or never even met their neighbors are now reaching out to other people, are now helping, are now providing that support to each other. So if I had an idea of what a new normal would be, a better normal, I would hope that that kind of compassion, that kind of patience, that kind of giving nature um, that we've seen throughout this entire situation would continue on, that we would become, you know, friends with our neighbors, that we would get to know our community, that we would um, not just depend on government or on certain agencies to do what we need to do in our communities, but we would step out ourselves. So I'm hoping that that, um, that positive thing that's come out will continue as we move forward after this pandemic. Thank you, Representative Kitagawa. That is an absolutely positive note to add, uh, end on. Thank you, Representative Onishi, for joining us. And thank you for tuning in today for our second episode of Talk Story with House Majority. Please follow the House Majority on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at High House Dems for the most recent updates. You can also visit our new website at hawaiihousedemocrats.com, which has resources all about COVID, press releases, and valuable information on how the House Majority is responding to this COVID pandemic. We'll see you next Wednesday. We're going to have some exciting guests with uh, Attorney General Claire Connors and Dr. Sarah Park. Uh, See you next Wednesday on Talk Story with House Majority. Aloha.